So today we are going to deal with the progress check of units 8 and 9. So let's start with the recycling of the vocabulary of the two units, that is human values and human rights. In this exercise, you have to fill in the chart with the right words in the list. Discrimination, solidarity, love, security, freedom, innovation, duty, hospitality, tolerance, justice and altruism. So you take some time to do your exercise. So we check the answers. So for human values, we have solidarity, love, innovation, hospitality, tolerance, altruism. For human rights, we have discrimination, security, freedom, justice, and duty. Let's move on to reading. So this is a text about human rights. So going to school is a human right, just like the right to life, liberty, and security of person. It is perhaps the most important because it is fundamental to enjoy the other rights. It is the gate for knowledge and innovation. Without education, there will be no progress, no equal opportunities, and no sustainable development. With the right to education, people can understand the other rights they have and get profit of them. Thanks to education, women are empowered, children are safe, and disabled people are treated with respect. In a word, active citizenship becomes a moral obligation. There will be no dropping out from school, and learning allows people to ensure a decent life and dignity. Education is not just a right, but it's also a duty. The governments have to build more schools, but the parents have to send their children there and make sure they are learning something. So let's do our exercises. We start with comprehension questions. The first question, are these statements true or false? And of course, you justify your answer. So A, sustainable development is the result of education. B, thanks to education, the citizen can get a stable income. And C, only the government is responsible for the children's right to education. So take your time to do this exercise. We correct together. So here, for A, we have sustainable development is a result of education. So this is true, because if you go back to the text, what do you have? You have here, without education, there will be no progress, no equal opportunities, and no sustainable development. B, thanks to education, the citizen can get a stable income. So this is true, of course. Let's go back to the, to the text, sorry, to justify. So we have here, thanks to education, women are empowered, children are safe, and disabled people are treated with respect. Or we have here, there will be no dropping out from school, and learning allows people to ensure decent life and dignity. This means that we can have a, an income. And see, only the government is responsible for the children's right to education. This is, of course, false, because the justification is education is not just a right, but it's also a duty. The governments have to build more schools, but the parents have to send their children there and make sure they are learning something. I hope that your answers are correct. So let's move to the second exercise. What do the words underlined in the text refer to? So it's in paragraph 1. Here, paragraph 1. Uh, them in paragraph 2. And there in paragraph 3. So take some time to do your exercise. 
you of course go back to the text to check your answers. So let's correct together. So for it, it refers to education, of course. Them refers to the other rights. And the last one, there refers to schools. Exercise three. Find in the text words which mean the same as A. Essential B. Handicapped and C. Responsibility You take some time to do the exercise? You can go back, of course, to the text to check your answers. correct together so for essential we have it in paragraph one it is fundamental for B handicapped in paragraph two it is disabled disabled people and then the last one which is responsibility we have it in paragraph three it is a duty. We say responsibility or a duty. They are equivalents, of course. Now let's move on to grammar. We will have a review on the conditionals. As we have studied, we have seen conditional type 0, type 1, and type 2. So let's refresh our memories. So for conditional type 0, we say that we use it to express a general fact or a scientific truth. This is an example. If you heat ice, it melts. So this is scientific truth. We all agree about, of course. Uh, conditional type one. We use it for real and likely situation in the future. For example, if the weather is nice, we will go for a picnic. This is a possible situation in the future. And for conditional type two, it is Unreal and unlikely, but there is a very little possibility. For example, if I was or I were rich, it is possible that I say if I were, I would buy a luxurious car. So let's move now to the, to the practice. Put the verbs in brackets in the correct form. So you take some time to do your exercise. Try to concentrate on the context, on the meaning of the sentence, to give a correct answer. Correct together. Number one. If I wake up late, I will must miss the bus. Sorry. This is conditional type one because it is a possible situation in the future. Number two, when my husband cooks, he burns the food. So this is something I'm sure of. This is, a, I can say it is a general fact. That's why I have used conditional type zero. You can remark here, you have the verb in the present simple in the if clause or, and in the main clause we have again the verb in the present simple. So this is conditional type zero. Three, your children won't be healthy if they eat junk food. Again, this is conditional type one, because it is a possible situation in the future. Number four, if you heat ice, it melts. Number five, water freezes if the temperature is under zero degrees Celsius. So this is conditional type zero, of course, because it is a scientific truth. And six, if it 
it is sunny tomorrow will go to the forest. So here it is the contracted form of we will, the short form. Let's move to the second part of the exercise. You take again some time to finish your exercise. Let's correct it together. She will pass the test next week if she studies hard. So this is a possible situation in the future because here you have an indicator which is next week. H. I'll help my mother with the housework when I finish my exercises. Again, conditional type 1 because it is a possible situation in the future when I finish my exercises. And 9. If I were you, I would start preparing for the exam early. And 10. If he weren't busy, he would help his wife with the housework. So this is conditional type 2, because it is a situation which is impossible in the, in the present, because he is busy. And 11. If he won a million dollars, he, will, he would start his own business, but he is just dreaming. This is not true. That's why we have used conditional type 2. In conditional type 2, of course, we have here the verb in the past simple and in the main clause we have would plus verb in the infinitive form. Let's move on to a review on hope and wish. So, a hope sentence expresses something positive likely and possible to happen in the future. And for its structure, you have subject plus hope or hopes. It depends on the subject. I say I hope, she hopes, plus that, plus subject, plus verb in the future simple. That is will plus verb in the infinitive form. Whereas a will sentence expresses regret about something impossible to happen in the present. And for the structure, we have subject plus wish or wishes. Again, it depends on the subject. I say I wish and she, he wishes. Plus that, plus subject, plus verb in the past, simple. Let's move to exercises. Complete the sentences with hope or wish. Make any necessary change. So you take some time to do your exercise. Our classmates, our teacher will postpone the exam. Two, Susan, she were rich so she could buy a nice car. I, I could speak German. Four, they, they could see their teacher again. Five, this is a short dialogue, Latifa. I'm looking for a second-hand car, Mark. I, you will find a good, cheap one. And six, we're having a nice time here in this camp. We, you were here. Are you ready to correct? So let's see the correction. Our classmates hope, because here we have the future form, will postpone. For Susan, Wishes, because here you have the, the past. I wish, I could. We have could plus verb in the infinitive. It is a present wish. For they wish they could see their teacher again. So here, the same, like sentence number three, we have could plus verb in the infinitive. So it is a present wish. And five, I hope you'll find a good cheap one because here you have an indicator which is the future simple. So we are going to use hope and not wish. We're having a nice time here in this camp. We wish you were here because here you have the past simple. So we should use wish and not hope. And the last review, it's about writing. So, do you think that people should stop studying when they get a job? You justify your answer. 
So here you give your opinion and you justify it. You defend your opinion. Thank you for your attention.